All right, so in this video, let's find the center of mass of a uniform hemisphere. So here I have a hemisphere of mass M and it has some radius R and we want to find its center of mass. Now, we're going to start from definition. Now we know that this hemisphere we can think of as being made up of a bunch of little infinitesimal mass elements dm, which occupy some infinitesimal volume dv, right? And we can point to each of these little infinitesimal mass units with the position vector, right? Little r. In this case, the center of mass of my hemisphere, which I'll call capital R, is defined as the integral over my hemisphere, I'll call this HS for hemisphere, of R dm divided by just the total mass of the hemisphere. All right, so I went ahead and updated my picture. I defined my directions x, y, and z with the unit vectors x hat, y hat, and z hat, in which case we can really clearly write out this, you know, integral over my hemisphere of dm over m times x x hat plus y y hat you know plus z z hat right we have just our general position vector r in cartesian coordinates but some of these terms are immediately going to go to zero right right which components of my center of mass are going to be zero for this hemisphere well because this hemisphere is rotationally symmetric about the z axis right or in other words, it has an equal distribution of mass in the x and the y directions, right? Because of that, we know that the center of mass in the x direction is just going to be on the origin and same with the y direction. My center of mass of this hemisphere at the end of the day is going to be located somewhere on the z axis, right? So the x hat component must be zero and the y hat component must also be zero. Okay, so really we just have to integrate over my hemisphere of z dm over m in the z hat direction. Great, so how do we actually use this uh, integration here, right? Because we have a problem. I have this spatial coordinate z as my integrand, and yet I'm claiming to integrate with respect to dm, which is totally not a spatial coordinate. We need to go ahead and fix this real quick. We know, though, that our mass density rho, right, can be defined as the infinitesimal mass element dm associated with each volume element dv of, you know, your object, right? Or in other words, we can rewrite dm is equal to rho dv. Now, because we have a uniform hemisphere, because we have a uniform hemisphere, we can simply calculate rho as taking the total mass of our hemisphere divided by its volume. And what's the volume of a hemisphere? Oh, it's just half of a sphere, so of course it's going to be half the volume of a sphere. So one half times four thirds pi r cubed, right? And this is just going to equal three halves m over pi r cubed. All right, so we're making progress. Let's go ahead and plug what we have in for dm directly in. Let's plug it all in. So I have integral over my hemisphere of z over m times 3 halves m over pi r cubed times dv. And of course, this is still in the z hat direction. All right, great. Let's go ahead and cancel out our constants here and we're going to pull our remaining constants outside of the integral. So we have 3 over 2 pi r cubed integral over my hemisphere of z dv in the z hat direction. We're going to have to calculate a volume integral out. Now, what coordinate system should we use to express dv in? Well, Really, we're going to want to use spherical coordinates, right? Because of course, this is a hemisphere and spherical coordinates are going to really easily allow us to define the boundaries of, you know, of this hemisphere, right? So we're going to use spherical coordinates. So in spherical coordinates, we can define the locations of our points, right? With some radial distance, call this just little r, 
and then we can have some polar angle theta with the z axis and of course if we project this down onto the xy plane we can have this azimuthal angle here phi with the x-axis. That's how we define spherical coordinates, okay? And with this definition of our coordinate system, a volume element dv is equal to, in spherical coordinates, r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi. You can find that equation on the coordinate systems equation sheet in the description of the video. All right, so let's go ahead and plug this in. We're going to have 3 over 2 pi r cubed. Now we're going to have some volume integral here. Okay, so up to a triple integral. I'm going to leave the z blank for a second. Let's put a little blank here. And now I'm just going to plug in my volume element right in for dv. So we have r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi in the z hat direction. Why did I leave z blank? Well, of course, we have spherical coordinates here now. We need to rewrite z, which is a Cartesian coordinate, in terms of our spherical coordinates. So let's go ahead and do that just now. So, so of course, what we said before is that this, you know, this point here is going to have some height z associated with it, right? Let's go ahead and draw this out, you know, this triangle out, you know, separately, you know, so that it's really clear. Here's what we're saying. We have some height of z, we have some hypotenuse, right, which was our radial distance r, and z and r form an angle theta, right? Do we see that super clearly with this triangle here, right? So z is going to be equal to r cosine theta. Great, so let's go ahead and just plug in r cosine theta into our little blank here. And now to finally formulate this uh, volume integral, now we just need to think about the boundaries of our integral and spherical coordinates. Really, really easy. Where's, uh, where's little r going to range from? Well, we have a, a hemisphere of radius capital R, so little r is just going to range from zero all the way out to capital R. So that's our first boundary, from zero to r. Where is theta going to uh, range from, right? If we define theta about the z-axis, then up here is theta is equal to zero. And as we arc down, we span, you see, as I arc down to form this hemisphere, I span out 90 degrees or pi over two radians, okay? So theta, theta is going to range from zero to pi over two radians and phi, phi is going to range, well, we traverse an entire circle with this azimuthal angle phi here, so phi is going to range from 0 to 2 pi radians, 0 to 2 pi radians. Okay, and now we have the boundaries of our integration. So let's just integrate this out. So this integral from 0 to 2 pi, let's start with this because this is really trivial. We have no phi dependence in our integrand, so this is just going to give me a factor it's going to give me a factor of 2 pi, that's it. And of course, this is going to cancel with my 2 pi down here. All right, so now we're down to two integrals. I'll go ahead and rewrite this out just for clarity. We have 3 over r cubed times the integral from 0 to pi over 2, integral from 0 to r of r cubed sine theta cos theta dr d theta, and this is all in the z hat direction, right? This integral with respect to r is really, really easy. We can see very clearly it's going to give us 1 fourth r to the fourth, right? We can go ahead and cancel out with our r cubed term, and then we're left with one more integral to calculate, integral from 0 to pi over 2 sine theta cosine theta d theta still in the z hat direction and of course you can very easily evaluate this integral with trig identities or u substitution you're going to get sine squared theta over 2 and we evaluate this guy from 0 to pi over 2 and at the end of the day when you plug in what's this going to give you oh just another factor of one half 
And so if we put this all together, we're going to have that the center of mass of my hemisphere is simply equal to 3r over 8 in the z hat direction. And there we go. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments and consider subscribing to the channel. I love to hear about people getting on board. But other than that, thank you so, so much for watching.